In this video, we'll talk about the finite difference method for solving heat conduction problems. We'll be focusing on two-dimensional problems, but let's start by thinking of a one-dimensional problem. Take a plain wall where there's a temperature gradient. We can apply our heat conduction equation and then solve this differential equation for our temperature distribution as a function of position. That equation will be valid at any location within the medium. But now we'll introduce the concept of the finite difference method. So we'll divide up our medium using nodes. At those discrete points, we'll be able to solve for the temperature. We will not be able to solve for the temperature between those nodes. We can also extend this to the two-dimensional case. And the first thing that we need to do is divide up our medium into a grid formation. This is called the nodal network, the grid, or the mesh. Each of these dots is a node. The spacing between the nodes in the x and the y direction must be known. They're often equal to each other, but they certainly don't have to be. The imaginary boxes around each node are called elements. Those elements have a volume, in this case, of delta x times delta y times delta z, which in the two-dimensional case is 1. The elements are drawn around each node and are represented by the average properties of that control volume. So the temperature associated with that element is really an average temperature across that element. Now we get the finite difference approximation form for the heat conduction equation. It'll be a little different for the interior nodes and the nodes on the border, the exterior nodes. We'll handle the interior nodes first. So we have a node of interest and we have the element which encompasses the node of interest highlighted in the middle. The X and Y locations are designated by the M and N indices, but this node is not by itself. This four-sided node has an element on each of its four sides that it may thermally interact with. This, in, this node has the same n value, but it's at a different x location, m plus 1. The other bordering elements and their nodes are similarly named. Note also that we've drawn a red arrow going into the element from each of the four nodes. Those arrows represent the heat transfer into that node. Now perhaps you're wondering how all of those heat transfer vectors are going into the element. Are we talking about a steady state problem? And if all of the heat transfer vectors are going into the control volume, the thermal energy contained by that control volume will be increasing with time. That wouldn't be steady state, would it? Well, when we do the math, some of the vectors will be positive, some will be negative, but if we're consistent, the signs will work themselves out. So now we're ready. Uh, to apply our governing equations to the node Mn. And if we assume steady state conditions and we draw all of those heat transfer vectors going into the node, we're only left with the heat rate of energy entering the control volume and the rate of energy generated. We don't always have heat generated, of course, but we'll work things out for the general case. So let's handle the rate of energy going into the node first. We're gonna give each of those um, vectors a name. So let's look at the top vector. We can see that this Q is coming from node M, N plus one, and going into node M, N. We do the same for all the other vectors coming into node M, N. Now we're ready to define the total rate of heat transfer going into the node M, N, which means we need to add each of those vectors up. The first vector is coming from the north, from node M, N plus one. We can apply Fourier's law. Note that we have dt dy since the temperature gradient is being defined in the y direction. So we have the negative sign k and the area. Note that the area is the area um, uh, through which the heat flows perpendicularly. So if we imagine the z-axis is going into the screen, that area is delta z times delta x. The dt dy is t at node mn minus t at node m n plus 1 divided by uh, delta z. So we can also recognize that delta z is just 1 since we're looking at a two-dimensional conduction. And then we can redistribute the negative sign to get things a little bit neater. We can also uh, we can look at the heat transfer vector coming from the east on the right-hand side. Um, and note that we have applied Fourier's law in the x direction. Note also that the area through which heat is flowing is delta y times delta z, and we've already noted that delta z is just one, and we can distribute that negative sign as well. We could define the other vectors in a similar manner. We sum everything up, and then if we say that the node spacing in the x and the y directions are the same, our expression just simplifies a little bit more. <clears throat> so, 
we have the first part of our energy balance defined. Now let's go to, to the next one, the rate of energy generated. So we can define the rate at which energy is generated as the volumetric heat generation rate, Q dot times the volume. Note that the units on each of these terms will multiply together to give watts if we're in SI units. Now we just define what volume we're talking about. The first, the one in the term represents delta Z. And if we did like we did when we were defining the rate of heat transfer into the control volume and say that delta X and delta Y are equal to one another, in other words, the node spacing is equal, we, would get, we get an even more simplified equation. So we put everything together now. Um, often you'll see things written through, written with a K, with the K divided through. Um, we can also write this like they do in your book and leave the subscript gen off the Q dot. Now let's say we have a completely different scenario and then we're looking at an exterior node. So here you see that we have a node of interest MN and it's right on the edge here. And let's say that we have convection going on. If we want to define the rate of heat transfer going into our nodes, we need to sum it all up again. We have three conductive heat transfer vectors. The one coming from node M N plus one in the north is just like what we had before. But the next one coming from the right node is flowing through an area of half what you had before. That area is delta Z times half of delta Y, um, the node spacing between nodes in the Y direction. It's the same for the conduction coming from node M minus one in. The heat transfer rate coming from the bottom by convection is governed by Newton's law of cooling. The only thing you need to worry about here is the area through which it's flowing, which is delta X times delta Z, where delta Z is one. <clears throat> so we can add everything together um, and then we'll say that the node spacing delta X times uh, delta X and delta Y are equal and we have a little bit of a simpler equation. Now we handle our heat generation term. We can define the rate at which energy is generated as the volumetric heat generation Q dot times the volume. Once again, the units of each of these terms will multiply together to give watts if we're in SI units. And we just define what volume we're talking about. The one in that term represents delta Z. We've had, we have delta X and then we have delta Y divided by two since we're talking about an exterior node and the ele element volume has been cut in half. And if we, if, if we did, uh, like we did when we were defining the rate of heat transfer into the control volume and say that delta X and delta Y are equal to one another, um, in other words, the node spacing is equal, we get an even more simplified equation. So let's add everything together. And now we multiply everything by two and divide by K just to simplify the equation a bit more. Finally, we combine a few more terms and we have an even cleaner expression for the energy balance of that exterior node. Your last step will be to solve for these unknown temperatures. So let's say that you have a two dimensional heat transfer problem and you wanna know the temperature throughout the medium. You're gonna to have to divide up your body into elements and define your nodes. You see how we've highlighted a particular node of interest here. You'll apply your energy balance to this node and get a governing equation with five unknown temperatures. But we'll also have other nodes and that we'll also apply energy balances to and we'll have unknown temperatures there as well. There are a lot of techniques. Uh, well, so you'll get nine equations and, and nine unknowns. Um, and there are a lot of techniques that you can use uh, to solve for those uh, to solve those uh, for those unknown values. Um, and in this class, we'll talk about Guy Seidel, which is just one method of solving sets of equations, but there are others. So, well, uh, I hope that that was helpful. Thank you for watching and let me know if you have any questions.